first, what surgeries were performed in this patient, and second, why. So today we are going to do something absolutely fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. We will try to solve a mystery MRI case. Let's jump right into this fascinating case and here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the wrist case. So in a great British manner, let's take out our hats and magnifying glasses, just like Sherlock Holmes, and let's drink a lovely cup of tea and sit back and relax while I'll explain to you the scenario and how you can solve this mystery case together with me. So it's a lovely morning after your well-deserved first holiday after all the lockdowns and this chap comes for an MRI of his right wrist. He is around 40 years old. The absolutely poorly handwritten request reads Proximal humerus fracture after severe accident decades ago with radialis injury and tendon transfer. The query is what tendon transfer or surgery was performed? And of course ladies and gentlemen that's all we got. There is absolutely no other information available, no surgical notes, nothing. So it is down to our amazing reduction skills to reconstruct the surgery of the past with that little information that we got. Okay, so we finish our first cup of tea and have been staring at these notes for some time already. We are still cursing the referring physician over that totally annoying request. So let's recap the current situation. We have only vague information about this patient's past and we have today's MR images. You have now two options. First, go over to Collective Mind Radiology at www.cmrad.com and search for this particular case. I have uploaded the case there and you can find it if you just type in Sherlock. Then you can open up the same MRI that I have here and you can pause this video and go through the case on your own time. I suggest you look at the images for at least 5 minutes. Really, you should absolutely do this. It is so much more fun if you do it, isn't it? You don't have a Collective Minds Radiology account? Well, ladies and gentlemen, in that case you have to stick with me here as I am briefly scrolling through the sequences. Oh, and in case you are wondering why I am not explaining anything here, this isn't a bug or something. It's really the point that you should try to solve the case on your very own. That is the whole point of this video. Well, it's not the only point, but I will share that in a minute or two. Now that we had a chance to scroll through the images, we can proceed. Admittedly, it is way easier if you go through the case and the DICOM images on your own and not in a video, but maybe you have realized already something or have a hunch at least. So it is now time for another great cup of tea and then let me give you some tips and tricks that will hopefully provide you with all the relevant clues to solve this case and come up with the answers. Okay, so you see, the clinical information, even that little bit that we have, is still very important here. So our first clue is that the provided clinical information is important. Try to really dissect this information. It is really a deduction exercise. Our second clue, ladies and gentlemen, is as with every postoperative MRI, susceptibility artifacts are our friends. I can briefly show you some of them here. Without any spoilers, I promise. Our third clue is that we need to know the anatomy. Pretty simple. And our last clue, number four, is a very good one. It might make you think a little bit, but I think it is an exciting trick. You should use the ampere function. I'm not going to say more here. Okay, after an absolutely fantastic thinking session, did you solve the case? The questions I need you to answer, ladies and gentlemen, are the following. First, what surgeries were performed in this patient? And second, why? 
post your answers in the comment section down below and feel free to add your answers also over on the Collective Minds Radiology platform. That's it my friends, in case you are still watching because you want to know the answer, it is with my heaviest heart that I have to inform you that I have no clue myself. I'm just kidding, no that's obviously not correct, but I'm deeply sorry that I will not provide you with the answer today. You see, the whole idea of this video was my evil plan to convince you to become a patron. The answer in video form, with the complete explanation and analysis of all the clues that I have perfectly laid out, will be published in a separate fantastic video later this week. But that video will be Patreon exclusive. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know what Patreon is? I'm glad you asked. Patreon is a fantastic platform where amazing people can support content creators and their absolutely stunning work, like this video for example. I have currently over 100 incredibly generous people that contribute to my YouTube channel every month. Just go over to patreon.com slash acton and join my community there for as little as $10 a month. But you will also get a free copy of my book Speed MSK Radiology, which was at some point an Amazon bestseller in the radiology section by the way. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Also, you get access to probably over 30 exclusive videos by now. Just go over to my Patreon page and support me today. You will find the link in the description down below. So I will see you later this week over on my Patreon page when I will post the answer to this fascinating mystery case. So before you move on to the next video, I want you to briefly reflect on how much benefit you get out of my videos here. How much of the stuff that I'm teaching you can you actually apply in clinical routine? If you get something out of it, then you could consider to become a patron of my YouTube channel. Patreon is an online platform where people can support other content creators just like me. You can find the link over here and click there right now.